morning, everyone. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, now Washington. Uh, so I am a finance geek. I help moms, women build wealthy kingdoms that will last forever. I myself, I'm a king, and so I teach this authority to, for women to have authority over their finances by helping them pay off debt, increase cash flow, lower your expenses, build your credit, all using your own income. And uh, I do that all by making uh, videos on YouTube. Okay, thank you. So we're going to get started with questions, but I would like this to be interactive. So if any of you have a specific question related to a topic we're on, please feel free to interact. I know the last session they ran out of time at the end, and we want to make sure that we're here for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is marketing your brand. As you all know, I got the purple, which looks so much like this, and it's something that stands out. So Denzel, I hear some wording in the way that you're, you know, branding yourself. And the things I heard from him are kingdom, you know, and the finance geek. So tell us a little bit about how you marketed your brand and how you decided to really target the women, you know, as your client base. Uh, so for me, I, I was able to discover my purpose at a very early age. Uh, you know, I had a, a revelation from God. Uh, spoke right into my life and he wanted me to do these specific things and when I leaned in I stepped into that opportunity I realized that the first person I could help was my own mom right and so I helped her pay off all her debt get her credit right I was just teaching her these very simple strategies to do with your money and also realizing just how you know money works in the 21st century so I tapped into my purpose and decided, well, the only way for me to share my purpose on a big scale is to get behind that camera and to start sharing and to be authentic and be real and make mistakes and stutter and just be happy, right? You don't gotta be perfect, you don't have to look good. Trust me, you can see my earliest videos, it was bad, okay? <laughs> but my worst videos have over 50,000 views, you know? And um, so marketing your purpose first, not what you do, Right, but just talking about why you do what you do, how you got here, and tapping into that because that's what people want, a story. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you for that. I mean, I think one of the things that really runs true for all entrepreneurs is that you have a passion. I think that the purpose, the passion, it's so important to believe in what it is that you're doing. I think that's where it comes from, right? It has to start from somewhere. So for me personally, I was a personal injury attorney, and I was there was no way to help people when they were injured in accidents. And I was calling their landlord and trying to help them and felt very passionate about that. So the business that I started had to do with giving clients money while they waited for their lawsuit. So I had so much experience with wanting to help them, and it really came from my heart. And I, I hear that with you, Denzel, as well. Um, Stacy, do you want to let us know a little bit about how you found your passion and marketed your brand? Well, it was when my pa father passed away that I really got clear that I couldn't just keep looking at how to make money, and I was in sales at the time. And one of my clients that I had, I helped her grow her business 200% in a year. And she, it was so much fun, and I realized that it was like the helping people grow their business that was the part that was fun for me, not the sales part of it. And so that's when I started to connect with, you know, how could I help people grow their business without sacrificing their personal life and to, to really have a real business. Because a, a lot of times people are like, oh, that's nice, you know, that you can pay for your grocery, you know, money. No, it's like creating a real business, but still having a life that you love. Like I was really excited. Last year I spoke here and brought my daughter with me. This year I brought my two older daughters with me. So it's really creating that lifestyle that you can have success and have a family success as well. Because at the end, if you don't have that, then. Yeah. I, I mean, I hear that a lot. I speak in front of a lot of groups of women trial attorneys and the biggest challenge most women lawyers face and women entrepreneurs is that balance being a mom a wife and trying to juggle that perhaps with running a company and how do you do that and um, maybe you know you could explain that about how you balance your everyday life Jennifer too um, I was gonna turn that over to her because that's definitely a challenge we all face well, that's a really interesting question. I spent the majority of my professional career in a corporate environment. 
and left that about nine years ago to start the company that I have. And the reason that I left that job, um, my husband also works a corporate job where he does a lot of international travel and our children were getting to be in the middle school age, um, which it's a lot harder to keep track of them at that point because they're not just in daycare and school and daycare and sports. There's a lot of other things going on. So I made the decision to leave my corporate job and to start my own company um, because it gave me the opportunity to make my own rules. And it doesn't mean you don't work a lot. It means that you get to do it on your own terms. Um, and for us, that was what was important. So that's what created the, the integration, perhaps. I don't know that anybody's ever in balance completely, or at least not all in one time. Um, and so that's the way that, that we do it. The um, women that work for me have very similar situations to me, and that's how we've constructed our company. Um, it does require a little bit more schedule management than if you were doing it a different way, but that was one of our core values, and it's something that's been very important to me to be able to create that for my employees. Right. I mean, I feel so strongly, and I'm sure a lot of you see this in your daily life, give something to a busy woman, and we'll get it done pretty quickly and efficiently. I have a, a majority woman st of a woman-owned business with, a, I would say, 95% of our employees right now are women, and three of them are currently pregnant. So the challenges that we face all the time are difficult, right, and how to balance all of that. But if you can do it, you're going to do it, and you're going to be so successful. And it really comes from you know, the passion that you have for whatever it is that you're, um, that you're doing. Very, um, just to, I really want to hit the topics as much as we can. So the one question I want to throw out there now to all of you is, um, have you raised capital for your business, or are you interested in stories about how to raise capital? Because that's the question I hear the most. You, know, you see Shark Tank, and um, how many of you have seen Shark Tank? Yeah, right? I watch it all the time. I'm sure all of you do as well. And, you know, they're out there pitching their products. And so to me, the biggest challenge for my business, and we can all talk about um, the challenges that every one of us have faced to be successful, but the challenge that I had initially was how am I going to raise money? The business that I have is money. It's a finance business. We needed to raise over $30 million to start our business. So what we did initially was started to network, and that's something I can't stress enough. We went into a bank in Chicago, and everybody stood up. It was a woman networking event, and the first woman stood up and said, I'm looking for $20,000 to start a bridal boutique. The next woman stood up and said, I'm looking for you know, $30,000 to start a jewelry business, on and on. And my partner and I stood up at the end and said, we're looking for $30 million to start a legal finance company. And everyone stared at us in the room. But then after that, we were approached by the moderators, and they introduced us to a mentor who was at the Northwestern Business School. And he said, I'm very impressed with you women, and I'd love to mentor you. So. I really believe in that the best way to get this done, and I'm happy to help any of you out there, and I'm sure you know, our panel is as well. Afterwards, we can you know, talk outside about how to raise capital. But if you could all just maybe address, Denzel, we could start with you, the challenges that you faced in starting your business and you know, how you were able to launch it, because I think that's the most difficult thing. How do you get started? So... One of the main things that I, I'm going to give you guys some principles and some concepts to definitely take home with is, you know, I was able to tap into my creator, you know, my God, my Jesus was able to give me the wisdom. And um, when I followed his kingdom principles, one being giving, okay, even if we don't have any money, I'm telling you, if you give, you will receive 10 times over. My own personal story is when I first started making YouTube videos, um, I was just saying, hey, anyone out there, uh, if you liked what you saw in my video, I will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you found value, please give to my channel every single time. I use a platform called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, is for content creators. Everyone in here should be a content creator. And so in, about, in a matter of less than nine months, I was able to raise over $100,000 just from people giving. I wasn't really like doing a service. I didn't, I didn't even know how to coach people yet. I was just saying, hey, I can help you, mom. 
dad, brother, sister, I, I can help you. Did you have a mentor in this, Denzel? Uh, you Jesus have... was my mentor for okay. the most part. But, there you, you go. Know, after, you know, I started... Uh, Spirituality, <laughs> I start, right? You know, so he's, he's digging yeah. deep. How about you, um, Stacy? Did you have um, a mentor, and what was your biggest challenge launching your career and your business? My biggest challenge is I married a French-Canadian. <laughs> And I'm American, and I followed my heart and moved to Quebec. And I live in a very, very small village that is 99.9% .9 French. <laughs> so I knew that I, you know, I did networking and things like that, but I knew I needed to be able to expand my reach. And so what I did is I connected myself with some serious mentors, um, one of whom is Chet Holmes, who wrote the book Ultimate Sales Machine, a uh, New York Times bestseller. And he was partners with Tony Robbins. So I also started working with Tony Robbins. And had a referral relationship with both Chet and Tony Robbins that sent me clients because one of the biggest mistakes I think I made at starting out was you know you just take anybody as a client and you'll soon find that if you're working with people that are not your perfect clients they will suck your life out of you right so it was like who else has my perfect clients and in this case it was Chet and Tony that they were doing radio ads they were doing you know TV and all of this stuff and they needed people to help coach their people so we were in partnership for that so it's like who else can connect you to your perfect clients so you might be a spa and it might be a bridal store that's your perfect client or you know if you're a garage it might be somebody else that serves a different part of the car than what you do but Look for people that can connect you to the people that are your perfect clients because your perfect clients are so fun. They buy more, they refer more, and they spend they spend more. They'll buy whatever it is that you sell because they they love you. Right. And one thing I fun. yeah I noticed when I was looking at your social profile is there were a lot of testimonials, um, and you know in my business as well it's just and I I saw in your business too it's really important to get your your existing client base to really give testimonials about why they like working with you. Get those Google reviews. That's so important. I can't stress that enough because you'll meet somebody at a networking event, whether you're trying to get more capital or you already have existing capital, and they're going to go look at your social profile. They're going to look at, you know, how many followers you have on the different social profiles. That's the way people really network now is through Google once they meet you. And um, I don't know if any of you know this. It actually, this is an interesting thing, and I've really um, led my whole business motto by this. Ten touches for marketing to get business and seven personal meetings to have somebody actually trust you. And I have found over and over again that that's so important are those touches, not just doing it once, meeting somebody at a networking event, but after we left that banking event, we followed up with a mentor, we followed up with all of the people there, and we followed up again with an email, and then we linked in with them. It's touching somebody more than seven times to really have them become a client or to get any value. Yeah. And I would just turn that over to um, Jennifer to see you know, if, you, if you find the same thing with your business. We absolutely find the same thing with our business. And um, it, we get... 99% of our business from referrals. So it's become very important not only for us to facilitate and nurture the direct clients that we will do work for, but also with the bankers and attorneys and investment bankers and business brokers that are referring the business to us. We're not always the first firm in the food chain. Um, so it's it's critical that we are nurturing the relationships along the path and that was probably my biggest lesson when I started my business was really knowing who I should be talking to and that's not always the same as the person who's going to benefit directly from the service that you're providing. Yes yeah, so I mean I, I agree 99% of our business is also referral based and it's not just that first transaction, it's keeping the customer, the client happy throughout the course of the relationship. And that means, you know, also managing your staff, making sure that you hire the right people. Um, so, to, I mean, on that note, we can segue into that. Hiring, I would say, you know, the next question I had for the panel was what was your biggest challenge in launching your business? And what's your biggest challenge now? And I could tell you my biggest challenge, both in launching the company and currently, 
they're hi it's hiring. It's hiring the right people, keeping the, the employees happy. We have a lot of millennials. There's a few of them in the back there with me. And it's challenging. A lot of people want work-life balance. But we're running a company where we need to work, you know, 8.45 to 5.45 and often on the weekends. Some of the women who work for me have to go to networking events on a regular basis. So to me, that's my, my biggest challenge and something I'm struggling with. Um, how about you, Jennifer? Do you see that too? Or maybe you have a different challenge. No, hiring is a big challenge. Um, hiring and maintaining. So one of the things that I know has been true for our business, and I would imagine is true for, well, all of us up here and most of you out there as well, your business changes. And you can outgrow some of the people that you've hired. And so as hard as hiring can be, recognizing that you may now have people in the wrong seats um, or they may need to get off the bus, um, to borrow a, a term from other folks, is, is almost as difficult or more difficult than hiring people to start with. You've invested a lot of time in training them. There, there's really nothing wrong with their performance other than your company has moved past that. So that's really where we're at in our business right now is that we've changed. Um, we've really honed down what we're offering. And there are some serious considerations I have to give to the team that I have. Yeah, and I mean, change is so important. I mean, when I look back even five years ago when we launched our company to now, even how we market, I mean, it was a different, everything's changed. Video now, I know Denzel's got a lot going on with video, is the biggest thing in marketing where in the past it was SEO and SEM. And then, I mean, it changes. It's, everything is dynamic right now. And so a challenge for me, too, is keeping up with the latest trends in marketing and how do you move at that fast pace and knowing when you have an employee who, like you said, you may like them personally, but they're just not the right fit professionally. That's very challenging. But I would, having been through 18 years of managing people, let them go. That would be a big piece of advice today to all of you. Um, Denzel, I mean, I don't know how many people you have working with you or... Yeah, so when you're first starting out a business, maybe an employee might not be the right fit. So what I've done to really lower my cost a lot is I'll do contracts where freelance, you know, Fiverr, Upwork, or I join a bunch of Facebook communities of different people that do different jobs that I can just simply set up like a three month, a six month deal because I don't know how long I'm going to need that service for. So that's really helped me save a ton of money because they're a lot less uh, and they're very direct to exactly what you need and you don't really have to train them because they do what you want them to do. That's their passion. And the way I actually afford, in terms of when you're first starting your business, because you, you don't have money to pay yourself when you're first starting out, right? So what I use uh, is a concept called velocity banking, which allows me to leverage debt to my advantage. And I'm able to borrow at 0%. So I'm able to limit my borrowing costs to damn near 0% to use that money to hire someone to help me with my video editing or hire someone with marketing, things like that, in a short time frame. And remember, if you're creating content and you're putting yourself out there and you're asking for help and you're consistent, then you're going to get some massive results. And then what I do is I pay myself back what I borrowed where I'm able to leverage that money strategically and pay nothing in interest. So that's, that's uh, you know, using debt to our advantage in the 21st century. If you don't know the difference between good debt and bad debt, you got another thing coming. So you want to really get into that, like learning how to actually use debt to your advantage. And that was a big, big help for me. Yeah, that's that's very helpful. And I also just really like what you said about outsourcing using Fiverr. We do a lot of outsourcing with PR, with marketing, digital, anything graphic. Um, so that was a really good point. And Stacy, um, I know you really have information to help give everybody today on how to tackle cash flow revenue and profits even as you're seeking funding. So if some of you are in the process of looking for funding and you don't have it yet, how do you handle that with your business? Yeah, so everybody has hidden profits in their business. Like I said, the average person that comes to my workshops finds $85,000 that they just didn't see. So that's the first step is to look at 
what are the resources that you have in your business that you can use right now? So I'll give you an example. Um, one of the things that you want to look at is packaging and pricing. Like, are they attractive to your perfect client? So you want to look at increasing your average sale and the lifetime value of your client. Because it doesn't matter how much money you get from somebody. If you don't have the, your average client value and your lifetime client value high enough, you're always going to need money, right? So what you want to do is create packages and services that fit your perfect clients, but then allow you to serve them at a higher level. So one of my clients that was in my mastermind, she, she looked, we looked at her packages, and her average sale was $1,500. And what we looked at is how could she serve her clients better, not take more time and like suck her energy out, but serve them even higher. And she was able to create a package, and now her average sale is $2,500 per sale. So these are things that you can look at is how you can put things together, how you can do things that attract your perfect client instead of just the general public. Yeah, thank you so much. So it looks like we have five minutes left, and I'd love to open up the floor to any of your questions for any of the panel or for all of us. Sure. Create content. Create content. Create One content. piece of video every single day for the next 90 days, I promise you, you will, you will create a vortex of money just coming your way. Ask people to give to you. You have to ask, hey, I need help. I need help. I need help. I need help. And this is why. Now, when you tell, and now I'm just, I don't know this. So I'm asking, when you're saying create the content, I mean, we str I struggle with my marketing team because we create content, but then I need to get it out. So how, it's not just the creation of the content, but how are you able to then, you know, promote the, I, I always, I talk about find your passion, promote it, but then you have to publicize it, right? Because you need to also create who's your, you know, are you using Facebook? Are you using LinkedIn? And how do you get it out to a lot of users? So, so I sit on the board of two nonprofits, um, and so I can really connect with what you're saying. Interestingly enough, um, I live in Kansas City, Missouri, and we are not the biggest city in the country, but are like number three in the number of nonprofits that we have. So it's a very um, saturated market, <laughs> if you will, from a nonprofit perspective. The, the, the biggest challenge that I have seen after the, after the content creation, which is a, a very critical point, as Denzel pointed out, is making sure that you're actually connecting that content with people who are not just passionate about what you do, but who have the wherewithal to help fund your efforts. Because in the first nonprofit I was on the board of, we had lots of people who were passionate, but no one was giving money. In the nonprofit that I'm working with now, and this nonprofit is just in the startup phases, there's a lot of connections into not only the community that it's going to be serving, but reaching out to the people that can write the checks. So you want to make sure that your, that your content that you're putting out is reaching the right audience, which is the combination of who's passionate about what you're doing and who can actually write you a check. Show me the money, right? right. Forget about, right. <laughs> um, what other questions do any of you have? Sure. So the biggest thing that, that I have found successful, it's twofold. First of all, it's to really help the person that you're connecting with understand how you're going to help them better serve their customer. So our role for the referral partners that we have is to, is to help them get those deals closed because a lot of them don't get paid until their deals get done. So it's critical to them that they have somebody like us who is filling that role. So however that would work for you and your business when you're connecting with those referral partners, 
Your job is to make them successful and to make them look good. Um, on that note, in the past, a lot of you were here for the last speech, and there was the was she a DJ? Yeah. She, she said somebody said fearless, and I would tell you, in I mean, because we ask for business, the I think the number one way to get business is to just come out and ask for it, and it's fe and be fearless. And you know what else? Pick up the phone. You know how many people are all about emailing and texting? Do you know how many people call me ever on the phone? Call. Pick up the phone. And my staff does that, and they get the business. It's that personal connection. I just wanted to add one thing. From working with Tony Robbins, I worked with his business mastery division. And one of the things he talks about is peak state. And that's why you see people at Tony Robbins events all jumping up yeah. in there. He's getting them into peak state. So one of the things in my hidden profit system is to ask for referrals when people are in their peak state. So for example, if you're a dentist and people say, oh, that didn't hurt, then that's a great time to ask for a referral because they're like, oh my gosh, that, I had a root canal and it didn't hurt. That's amazing. And they're like, well, who else do you know in your family that's scared of the dentist, right? So look for those peak referral states in your business and also train your staff that like, here's a time when people are really loving what we do. Make sure you ask for a referral at that point. Yeah. Another question. Are you talking about when you're leaving a corporate role and you're, are you trying to build your business while working a full-time job? That's challenging, right? <laughs> I mean, that we I could probably ta that. have a whole panel on that. Right. I've had a few clients that have done that. And one of the things that's really important is to not get stuck in the BS funnel of like having to have the perfect everything before you launch. That's what's going to burn you out because you're like, oh, I can't do it yet. I can't do it yet. Right? So you want to be in revenue generation mode and focus on revenue generating activities for your new business. Because if you're focusing on those revenue generating activities, everything will work itself out because you'll be able to leave faster. Yeah. Any other questions? Because we have like one minute left. Anybody else? I would just add to that all those that are in nine to fives, whether you got a home, uh, you're collecting W-2 pay, fill out your W-4 properly already, will you? Like, you're, you're losing so much money towards taxes, so fill out your W-4 right. If you have a mortgage and you're paying an escrow on it, get that escrow off and keep that money for yourself. Pay it at the end of the year. Defer the taxes out. There's so much cash flow that you could use for your business right now before you actually have to pay the escrow or pay your taxes at the end of the year. So if I can 10x my income within the next 12 months, I'm going to have the money to pay that off, especially if I build my credit while I'm doing it. So those are two little things I want to leave you with. Yeah, thank you all very, very much. Um, well, I'll be around, and I'm sure all of us would stay around outside if any of you have any more like individual questions. Thank you. Thank you.